Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin into the comp video. We're going to have a daily dose of tech news because there have been a couple of movements, as you would expect, in the tech industry. We're going to start things out with AMD's Zeppelin range of processors, which are essentially, I guess you could say, a massive conglomerate of Zen cores, up to 32 of them. We'll go into more on that in just a second. And then we're going to zip on over to NVIDIA's upcoming Pascal architecture because some reports are popping up over the internet that the original launch date that we were hearing murmured just over the last couple of weeks is actually incorrect and it could actually be pushed back considerably later than what we initially anticipated. But, as I said, first things first, AMD, since it's first in the alphabet. So, this news actually popped up on Fudzilla, but originally um, started life from a rather unexciting sounding but very informative Linux kernel mailing list. Now this post is by AMD's Ray Huang Ri, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'll spell it out for you, H-U-A-N-G and the last name R-U-I. And according to this post, Zeppelin supports eight bundles of four cores on a single chip, which means total, for those of you who are bad at math, 32 physical processing cores, which is obviously kind of gargantuan. Now, we do know AMD are pushing rather heavily for servers, and this would logically mean that this processor is, of course, going to be aimed precisely at that market. To give you an indication of just how massive, in terms of parallel workloads, this uh, Zeppelin could potentially run, 32 Zeppelin cores would be able to run 64 simultaneous threads thanks to SMT, which is obviously simultaneous multi-threading. Essentially, once again, hyper-threading if you're unfamiliar with it. So basically think of the likes of the 2600K or the 6700K if you want an Intel comparison, or hell, even the Pentium 4 hyper-threadings. This means that two four-core systems may offer up to 256 threads per system. That is absolutely insanity. Now, we've heard a lot of rumours concerning various chips from AMD, and the total number of cores is also something that hasn't really been confirmed. In fact, it's possible that a 32-core chip might not launch, but it looks from the code like this is like the maximum supported in a theoretical cluster, which is absolutely crazy. Continuing with that news, just for a moment, um, other reports have popped up. And once again, it's kind of tricky at this point to know just what's pointing to what. But other research papers have appeared in the past which have referred to a very similar unsure if it's the same, unfortunately, chip known as the Exascale Heterogeneous Processor, which I guess Zeppelin is a bit less of a, a bit less of a mouthful. And essentially this is an APU, so once again accelerating processor unit, which basically means CPU, uh, GPU, and in this case high bandwidth memory, all on the same die. So, what does that mean? Well, from what we can tell, yes, it's going to have access to DDR4 memory, so obviously you're going to have that, but on top of that, you're going to have the high bandwidth memory, which is going to connect to the GPU, obviously that's going to feed that, but because it is all linked together, the CPU can directly talk to the GPU, which can then write to the memory, and all of it is going to be absolutely spiffing, because all of this will be apparently tied together with AMD's own coherent fabric. For those of you who don't know what Coherent Fabric is, as you probably are aware, most systems today are using PCIe, um, which isn't bad, depending on the speed of the devices you're using. Technically, it can be up to around 15 gigabytes per second, maybe slightly less, depending on the number of devices you're running on that PCIe bus. But... The interconnect from AMD, once again coherent fabric, is going to be considerably higher than that, 100 gigabytes per second. Moreover, latency is going to be reduced as well. Unfortunately, reduced is a bit of a question mark because we don't know what it's going to be reduced from until. Currently, we're hearing figures of around 500 NS for PCIe, 
but while we're hearing smaller number, considerably smaller number if you believe AMD, that doesn't mean much because for the sake of argument, considerably smaller number when you're dealing with NS could be 450 or it could be 100 NS total. We just don't know. It's kind of worth remembering that this is very similar in terms of what uh, NVIDIA are proposing with its own uh, next generation devices, which is known as NVLink, but there are some substantial differences. From the early reports, it would appear that NVIDIA definitely have the bandwidth advantage, but there are going to be some changes. From what the early, I guess you could say, guesstimates are that AMD are probably going to have the um, latency advantage, there's going to be a smaller latency, NVIDIA are going to have the higher bandwidth, however, they are going to be aimed at very different architectures. Essentially, AMD's is still going to be aimed at its own processes, x86, which is obviously going to be um, for desktops or servers, whereas NVIDIA's are going to be strictly for high-end server farms and therefore are going to work primarily with IBM-based mainframe processors. Now, from what we can tell from another leak which popped up from Fuzzilla, which shows the Vega 10, also known as the Greenland, it is connected to the coherent data fabric. This means that we're going to be looking at a bandwidth of around 500 gigabytes per second, which links the Zeppelin to the GPU, which is absolutely crazy in terms of the amount of bandwidth that we're looking at with its own um, chip. So essentially, in this case, once again, just to go over it, the HBM will talk to Greenland, the GPU, at 500 gigabytes per second. Zeppelin, also known as the CPU, can speak to the GPU at 100 gigabytes per second, but that interconnect can also be used to speak to the uh, HBM as well. So it can write data or say to the GPU, I have left data in your memory to process. So for the sake of argument, give me the sum of one plus one. The GPU will carry out that calculation and then obviously it can pass off that data either to the CPU or to the GPU, or the GPU could write directly to DDR4, which um, obviously will depend on, in terms of its bandwidth on the uh, DDR4 that's used. For example, it could be DDR4-3200 and everything is absolutely amazing. Should be kind of cool. This once again isn't necessarily going to filter down to us as desktop users right away, but it does give you at least, I guess you could say, an inkling of where we do want to end up in the future. AMD are still pushing the APUs, although less so than what they were, but eventually we will see them on the desktop and it could lead to absolutely crazy performance levels for the next generation desktops in let's say two, three, four, five years time. And obviously we've been kind of stuck on this level of performance for some time now, so definitely I'm all for an increase in processor cores and I'm certainly all for an increase in total amount of bandwidth overall. Now, there were some reports that floated around, uh, going to the NVIDIA side of things, that Pascal would be taping out in June. Now, these rumours have always been contrary because some have believed that June is a possibility, others believe that it's going to be later on in the year. Now, personally, I did think June was a little early, but we honestly don't know at this point. However, new guesstimates are showing that that's potentially completely inaccurate and it's possible given the Zuba manifests and from what we understand so far that the GPUs that we're seeing reported as a tape out is not production level silicon is what some are asserting and in fact they believe it's just early testing hardware which would essentially mean that NVIDIA are still conducting early, early, I guess you could say, is it working, proof of concepts. And that would mean, considering that we all know that it takes at least six to seven months before the final tape out, which essentially means GPU's finished, you're good to go, it can be printed. That is kind of like the gold disc, I guess you could say, on the software side of things. 
you know, the software's gone gold, which means it can be uh, ready for production. In this case, it's going to take a long time for developer, uh, sorry, for the companies to actually start manufacturing the GPU. Now, semi-accurate are the ones who are aiming uh, and pointing this out. I'm not sure about this whole situation, to be honest, because GPUs can slip really quick. Um, and unfortunately, it could be a case, and I'm not saying it is, but we know for 100% certainty AMD have already shown off functional Polaris silicon. It's working, know that. They've shown it, they've run power tests on it, they've shown it to a room full of journalists. Journalists have got to be able to physically look at the damn thing, hug hug it and, you know, fondle it. Well, not necessarily. They weren't allowed to take photos of it, unfortunately, which kind of sucked, but journalists were able to see the damn silicon running live, which is always a good sign, which is one of the reasons that I've always been saying rather than in a lot of my videos hey you know we know polaris is definitely coming at some point this year but nvidia it's a bit difficult to know and it is possible that nvidia didn't want amd to have the i guess you could say the pr news the the pr run and actually wanted to be a bit more boastful um but unfortunately because we didn't really see any demos at ces from nvidia it doesn't really look good, but once again, it's a bit tricky to know at the end of the day. All we can do is just kind of, uh, I guess you could say, wait and hold the phone. Let's put it this way. It, it should be a very interesting couple of months, because obviously, finally, when we start to know more details about NVIDIA and AMD's hardware, I have a feeling everyone's going to go a little bit crazy. And I must confess, when I did see the power consumption numbers of AMD's next generation cards, I must admit I kind of got a little bit excited because it's a great indication where we will be going um, with the next generation of performance. But as I said, the dates at the moment for the GPUs, at least for Pascal, are very, very tentative. So just be aware of that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.